Hello and welcome to my channel. Thanks for joining me today if you're a new viewer and if you are a returning viewer or a new subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. This is episode number 42. My name is Madeline and this is the Mad About You YouTube channel. Um, this is a really self-indulgent, acquisition-heavy um, episode today. Uh, so, and there has been some crafting and we have a craft along. So, um, hopefully this won't, I don't think it'll be as short as the last one, probably not as long as the previous one before. So make sure you grab something to drink. I've got, um, a little bit of soda water with some lemon and, um, yeah, sit down and join me while I tell you what I've been working on, um, what I've been, I haven't thought of it but by the good time we get there we'll have some reading watching listening and um yeah settle in and enjoy if you'd like to follow me in other places online you can find me on instagram as mad about you and you can find me on ravelry as mad bell as always the notes about this episode and everything that i talk about will be listed down below so there will be a little down arrow and you can um in the description box and you can pop down there and have a look Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, I will have a blog up online. Um, so you'll be able to view the notes over there. I will still um, keep them down here, but there'll be a dedicated page on my website for YouTube notes. So let's start with works in progress. Um, I know we will go. We will go in order. So, um, this is my um, socks, which were my, uh, I called them my winter session socks, because um, I started knitting on them when my winter intensive started for my university degree, and I actually haven't knit on them since the week before I, excuse me, I've got the hiccups. I haven't knit on them since the week before I recorded, or the week I recorded my last episode. The yarn is beautiful yarn by um, Rosehip Island, and the dyer is Hannah, and Rosehip Island are um, a Tasmanian um, hand dyed yarn company. And yes, so let me just show you because it speaks for itself. Um, this was the Hyacinth sock set, so it came with a 20 gram um, mini. So I'm gonna do, well, I've done the cuff and the toe will be done in the hyacinth colorway as well um oh, in the like in the mini skein and then this is the sock so i think i was about here or very close to this last time you saw it and then since then i have done the heel flap on the second sock and um i haven't really done much making on them since then because i've been working on my other object um I'm back in, I'm in semester two now, so these will be my probably like second pair of 2020, 2021 uh, socks. So yeah, I'm knitting those on a 2.5 millimeter chow goo, 2.25 millimeter chow goo, not at all. Ha, oh, Madeline, I'm knitting them on a 2.25 millimeter higher, higher sharp nine inch circular um, and just some Knit Pro Zing DPNs. Um, I have pulled out this Addy lace um, uh, what do we call this? Why are words failing me today? This is a long circular needle, um, but I haven't needed to use that yet. And the pattern was just a basic vanilla sock with a eye partridge heel. And um, yeah, it's kind of at the point where you have to focus, like doing the heel. And I thought I would do it last weekend and it didn't happen. So anyway, we are, here we are. And that's where it's at. It'll be stagnated, stagnant for a bit because I've been working on something else, a crochet project. Um, so I've been using this, uh, what are they called? Tulip, Etimo um, Tulip. It's a 3.5 millimeter hook. And I have been working on my granny strap blanket. So I did put some um, stitch mark, like a progress keeper in, so you could see how much I've done. And there's actually, I found another progress keeper on here, so I'm not entirely sure what this one's from. 
but the last time I showed you this, it was here. Um, and so I had a cat stitch marker on there, but I've moved that one away. And now we've got the Alice in Wonderland clock. And yeah, so this is, this is for you, Ellen. It's coming along. Um, and I've been really enjoying it because it's really mindless for me. And this is all I've got left. So I, I weighed it. Um, I haven't crocheted on it probably for a couple of days now. Um, but, um, yeah, there's 90 grams left. I think it was 90 grams. I think there were 10 grams each. And it's 90 grams left. So there's nine colors. I started with 22. So there's quite a lot already in this blanket. And to be honest, I thought it would go much further than it has. So I'm going to be making this thing for a very, very, very long time, I imagine. Um, so yeah, this one is being kept in my Kitsch Creative, who's also Yarn Creative Australia. Um, and that's Kylie. And this is a beautiful bag, which I talked about last time. It's probably my favorite fabric that I've seen in a really long time. So um, currently, while it's big enough, it's the perfect size for a small pair of socks and it's the perfect size for my, I think it's about 220 grams of yarn, um, which is, I think if I checked Ravelry, my magic cake would be about 220 grams. Um, so that's it, that's all I've been making. Um, but I don't know how to structure this because I've got an imminent make, but we're going to talk about craft along and the craft along will have its own segment. So let's do acquisitions because that's been a lot. And um, then we will talk about the craft along and then all my blather section. It's been like two weeks or three weeks and I feel so out of practice. Um, okay, so in order of arrival, Let's do that. I've had a lot of yarn delivered. Like, far too much. Okay, first off, it was a bag by Vanessa, my creative garage. This is her little card here. She wrote me a really lovely little note. It's, uh, the fabric is K Kirsten Katz fabric. And I have ordered a bag from Vanessa before. If you're a long term viewer, you might remember my little cactus mini bag um, that used to hold my granny strap. Um, I've used that in the past. It's actually all packed away down here now. Also, you might notice that this was like a beautiful thing of yarn that I could pull out and fondle and do whatever. I found a moth in the house. Like, the day after I recorded the last one. So I went to Ikea and I got those big um, six quart, which I don't know how many mils that is, plastic bags. And so everything bar this one, which is my next pair of socks, which is up there a little bit more, are all in plastic bags now because I'm too, oh no, here's the bag. I'm a bit too scared. So this is my first bag from Vanessa. And I've raved about how beautifully made it is. It's very sturdy um, and I love it. And it's got this little carry handle. And probably when my uh, granny strap gets a bit bigger, it'll migrate to this bag. Um, and my box for bags is too full at the moment. So that's not great. Um, so that's why that's there. Okay. Oh no. <laughs> my brain. This is the bag I bought. I think the camera is too close for me to actually show you this properly. So this is the front. I think this was a large bag. It has two carry handles and um, I've used this bottom fabric before on my Finch buckets that I made back in 2020 last year. Um, so I do know it's a very sturdy fabric. Um, it's like a canvas, a pink canvas. And then this is like an Australian native print and this bag I wasn't quite sure it was bigger than I thought it was going to be when it arrived I think this tea came from Vanessa but because I've had a few orders and a lot of people put tea in that orders I can't remember which tea came from who but anyway this bag is great when I start going to knit night again either I find myself a knit night or I create myself a knit night when I move later in the year this will probably be my 
portable knitting bag. It is great. So at the moment it is housing my socks and this little bag was from Masked Circus and it is housing my granny stripe and then my make along yarn. And we will get to that in a minute. Okay, that arrived. I impulsively bought six games, a sweaters quantity, a jumpers quantity of DK yarn from Hannah from Circus Tonic Handmade. And I, I have the fourth, the fifth is away somewhere. So I'll only, sorry, the sixth, I will show you five. And these are those big IKEA bags I was talking about. So they're bigger than just your normal Glad sealable bag. And I find you can usually fit five or six games in them. And so that's what's in there. Okay, so this is Dawn. The colorway is Dawn on her Carnival DK 100% non superwash wool, 225 meters in 100 grams. So that is Hannah's logo. Don't focus on me. There we go. And I bought six of these. So, like I said, there's only five here, but the sixth one is in a different bag because it didn't fit. Um, and it's non superwash wool, and I have been looking for a non superwash wool DK or Aran weight to make myself a jumper. And I've talked about it earlier in the year. I got some minis from Tarned Worn Court or Tandy. Um, I think they've rebranded to Tarned Worn Court now. Um, and so I bought some minis from them, which I haven't swatched for, but then this pink colour came up. I don't have a, exactly have a pattern in mind. I do think it'll be um, the Yorkville pullover by uh, Knitting Expat. Um, one of the sideways cardigan or pullover by Sosu Knits or maybe even a Ramona cardigan. Um, or I could get some light pink mohair or faux hair and make a magnolia. But I feel like that would just make it a little bit too warm for the climate that I live now. And I am really keen to do a cardigan. So yeah, I don't have any immediate plans to cast anything on because we've got to make along. Um, but anyway, they were discounted and so I haven't bought from Hannah in a while and I really wanted to support her. And then that was like in between the Mulaney Craft Fair and Spendigo being cancelled. So I'm trying to distribute my money around after both of those events and I got Hannah before Spendigo. And then the spendigo happened and um yeah i was running out of cash okay so i don't think i talked about these yet i made an instagram post i went to the yarn bowl in brisbane there in banyo i think um and i bought some giveaway prizes so, and I also bought some sock yarn, but that has been packed away down here and I should have pulled it out and I can't. So anyway, if you want to check out the yarn I bought, um, pop to my Instagram, mad about you, and you can see there's a post on my, on my grid. So I bought three things, uh, four things. I bought two balls of 50 gram sock yarn, which was Shepes, I think I said that right, Shepes, Shepes. Um, I bought sock yarn. I bought this here, which is a Notions pocket. Um, and this is sold by the Yarn Bowl, but it's made by Yarn Creative, who also made my uh, Sugar Glider bag, as well as these, which are also made by Kylie. So, um, I haven't exactly decided on the giveaway prizes because I don't know if I want to keep this or whatnot. But um, there will be at least one prize, maybe two, if we get a few more things donated to the podcast. I've bought some stuff. We've got that the lovely donation from Crafts by Bella and by Mel from Down Arm and Dyer. So between all of that, um, we will have some awesome prizes for the make along. Um, and I will do a 500 subscriber giveaway when we get there. We're at 400, low 400. So whenever that is, um, we'll also do a giveaway then to say thank you so much for subscribing and watching and whatnot, because it means a lot to me. And um, yeah, I like being vulnerable with you guys on the internet and it means a lot when you support me and come and see what I'm making and and whatnot. So I picked those up plus that wall. I told you there was a lot. Okay, next. Um, Mel from Down Under Dyer. I'm in a group chat with her and a few other Aussie podcasters and um, we were chatting and I had a whinge about how Morris and Sons postage was expensive. 
um, or it used to be expensive and I really needed some yarn to make another an animal and she just put a little message in the chat and said um free shipping so $130 later four animals worth of yarn here we are so I have this is the Ed's Menagerie animals from two episodes ago um I basically sat down with my Ed's book picked out four animals that I think I'd like to make and roughly figured out the yarn I can't remember <laughs> what that one was supposed to be that's for Chardonnay the Palomino Pony and this one is for Seamus the Alpaca um that goes with this one and I think that one and that's it. So I bought five of this color. I don't know why. There was method to my madness at the time. Um, so yeah, I want to kind of have two animals like in reserve for my friends. Like I know you get a lot of warning when your friends have babies, like typically, I don't know, three to six months notice you get, but I'm always like either just before the baby's due or late in my gifting. I think I need the pressure of the baby's been born. Oh shit, I'll choose my animal and make it. Um, so I've chosen ones that I actually want to make because they'll either be challenging or they're really cute and I actually, to be honest, wouldn't mind keeping some for myself to have like on my yarn shelf um, when I move into my place in a few months time. So anyway, I picked that up from Morrison Sons and then like three days after I ordered and got my free shipping, they had a 20% off their own yarn sale. So the yarn here is um, Morrison Sons Estate 12 ply, which is like a worsted kind of weight yarn, um, 65 meters to 50 grams. And I find that I need about four of these to make an animal. So yeah, I've got three animals worth and then two other colors. I think I must have an animal's worth in, in storage already. We're nearly done for acquisitions. Um, Next we have Skip Rope Yarn Co and that is Cass and so just trying to see she sent me a really lovely note as well with some tea so this is her here branding and then that's her details which will be linkable down below so she's Skip Rope Yarn Co on Instagram and www.skipropeyarn.co.com.au Oh, I'm out of breath because I talk too fast. Okay, so the yarn came really lovely package in a combust compostable com compostable. Wow, compostable bag. Um, and then wrapped really nicely in brown paper with a um with a sticker and some really cute black like, fabric tape, which I loved. So I kept that to show you guys, and then it will go in the compost. Um so she's doing this thing called something Thursdays, like Trio Thursdays. And then about two weeks ago, she posted this trio on, on her Instagram. And it's like, I don't need three color shawl weight anymore. Like I am chockers. I literally am on a yarn ban for the foreseeable future. Let's see how long I stick to that for. Um, I haven't been working. So my thank you count is decreasing. But I had to say yes to this. Um, so... Three skeins. This one here is called True Teal. It's in the nine to five sock base, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. This one here is, oh, it's a Thursday threesome. That's what it's called. Um, and they're limited editions. This one doesn't have a name, I don't think. And then this one's called Cloud Nine. So it's a nine to five sock. Oh, maybe that one's a limited edition. And then that's the three together. So lots of options they would be a beautiful brio duo like could you imagine a sizzle pop in that or even gray and pink i think um would be really lovely what's that andrea maori one that i have in my library i've mentioned it before i've got lobby anime yarn put aside for it but i don't know if i'll make it anyway i think that would be beautiful so there's that one more thing, at a wrap today. Once a year, Amy from Lobby Anime have their annual birthday sale. And I feel like I didn't buy anything at the birthday sale because I said to myself, Madeline, no, this is ridiculous, it's enough. And then shipping is a bit much because it's like 20 euro flat rate shipping. Crazy town. But then she got free shipping. So, 
I bought a kit. It is the Vertices Unite Baby Blanket Kit. And this is called The Pinks. So, five skins for a Vertices Unite Baby Blanket. The most bloody expensive baby blanket in the world, I would imagine. This one is Merino DK Superwash Merino. Colour, Dawn. This one is Yellow Brick Road. I'll hold them like this. Um, and then we have this one, which is Dire Wolf. And then we have Sansa. So these are Game of Thrones colourways. And then parchment. So my rationale between this, behind this was I'm going to knit myself a baby season night baby blanket. In DK, great. If I have a baby, awesome. I nearly bought two packs because I was like, I'll buy the, the boy, uh, the blue blanket and then the pinks. Then I thought to myself, this is really, do I need a, I'd be better off buying Clarketon and making the Vertices Unite in more of a durable Australian yarn. So anyway, now that these have arrived and I own them, um, let's see, I could make the Clark Pullover, Hohe Locatelli has a couple of DK weight, um, like striped jumpers, which I think would be really good. And I'm not interested in a fingering weight jumper for a while. So yeah, we'll just wait out on that one. Excuse me and see how we go. Okay, that's it. That's all the madly, ridiculously indulgent stuff. I'm sorry. I'm such a yarn glutton. Honestly, like, my hobby should be knitting, but my knitting, my, my knitting, my hobby is buying yarn. I wonder if next year I can not buy yarn. See, my problem is, right, is that I have all these makers that I love to support. And I've made friends with some people who are dyers and I really, I love their yarn and I want to give them all my money. But when you're not working, I mean, I am, I'm supposed to be working, but I haven't worked because of uni. I mean, I've gone back to work this week, but I'm, I bill my work every fortnight and then it takes a week to process. So like, I won't do, finish working until Tuesday and then I'll send the bill off and I probably won't get paid for another month. So I need to rein it in. Since this, no, that's all I have for you. Okay, moving on. My personal finances are, uh, oh dear. This is what my splurge account is for. Yarn. Alrighty. So let's talk craft along. We officially cast on on Sunday, the 1st of August, 2021. In, it's Friday the 30th today, so in two days time. I'm not quite sure when this will go up. I'm, I will endeavour to have it, maybe if I can edit this really quickly this afternoon, upload overnight and it'll be fresh waiting and you'll have two podcasts in a week. Or maybe I release it on Sunday morning because then it can be August episode. Okay, so um, craft along news. I need to bring up my Instagram so I can exactly remember my rules. I say rules, but this is pretty, pretty lax. Um, I'm more than happy, would love it if you share. I haven't put restrictions on the prizes, so who would win? Um, in, I'm happy to send international, but I will just like obviously get quote for postage, but I'm happy to send um, the prizes internationally. Um, so just going to my post. 1st of August to the 30th of November 2021. Basically it's four months before we start Advent in or August, September, October, November, four months. Um, I have said that you choose a pattern, a craft or a project that will challenge you. Maybe try a new technique, construction type or a new craft to you. So I've got some friends from my old work who are crochets. Alice, I don't think you watch, but hello if you do. Um, and she's going to try knitting a project and she's going to knit a pull uh, like a, a top or something. So I'm just like, I've always admired her and been in awe of her ability to just decide she's going to do something and do it. So I'm actually really proud that um, kind of this platform is in in encouraging people to step out of their comfort zone a little bit. Um, and then no need to finish your project to be in the giveaway. All you need to do is 
basically when you work on it and you post it to Instagram, hashtag mad about you challenge. Um, and then maybe we'll make this an annual thing. If it, if it goes off this year and people are keen, then maybe we'll put a 2022 next to the hashtag next year. Anyhow, um, what else did I want to say about it? Oh, some suggestions. So these suggestions actually came from comments from last episode. So if you are joining in, um, you want to leave a comment below what you're joining in with. That's great. When you put it on Instagram, I'd really love it if you tagged me. Um, I will follow the hashtag, but um, also tag me so I can see it because I'm only getting on Instagram kind of like once a day. So if there's lots of tags, I can go and have a look and see what you're making. Okay, so some of the suggestions. A pair of top socks if you knit cuff down socks usually. Um, brioche, cables, maybe a new construction type. So like if you've only knit a top down sweater, maybe you wanted to knit something bottom up. Um, knitting if you're a crocheter or crochet if you're a knitter. I actually have a friend who I went to high school with and we've reconnected recently and she's living in Vancouver, Canada. And um, yeah, she has started embroidery, but she's actually going to try something with polymer clay as part of her um uh, challenge so yeah I I kind of in my head thought let's I didn't think let's restrict it to knitting crochet I just imagined that people who either followed me on Instagram or viewed this channel were into knitting and crocheting but like try something new try a new craft so that's that's cool so um no you don't have to finish it to be eligible for the prize lord knows I don't even know if I'll finish the darn thing I, I know I won't finish mine by November um so no Buckley's chance like my knitting time is already going down but I wanted this to cast on I wanted to use a lifeline and I wanted to set aside myself some time on a weekend maybe like two hours it's like craft a noon and then on this project and that's kind of where I'm focusing on my crafting for this so anyway without further ado you've seen it before but I'm gonna show you again because it's my podcast and I can okay pattern sizzle pop by Leslie Ann Robinson and she liked my post Leslie liked my post and Amy from La Bienna May did as well. So this is it here and that's it there. I don't think it's like going to be the most practical for me to wear, but it has lots of increases and lots of decreases. And that's what I struggle with in my brioche. So I'm going to be well and truly challenged. Now the yarn that's wound up for this is La Bienna May. I think it's called Merino Singles. I hope that's what it's called. Yeah. Lipstick and tickles. Now I have figured out which was the main color and which is the contrast, but I can't for the life of me remember what that is. But I know it's on my um, Ravelry project page. So actually that's another thing to do. When you, if you use Ravelry, if it's accessible for you and you do, when you get to put a hashtag, pop your hashtag. So for me, I personally file my stuff by like the year that I made it, yarn, pattern designer, whatever. And then for this, chuck in hashtag mad about you challenge because I can see it on Ravelry that way as well. And in my Sean's Yarns bag, I think it was Sean Yarns. Yes. I don't know. That's embarrassing. I couldn't remember. So I haven't used this bag yet either. So that'll be fun. But I feel like this is an at-home project for me because I really need to concentrate, at least to begin with, and then I think it becomes more intuitive as you go. I bloody hope so. Okay, so that's it. That is me, my... Ooh, self-indulgent yarn buying and craft along news so we, we cast on on Sunday and I was thinking maybe I could open up a zoom um and put a link out and I don't I just don't think I'm actually gonna have the time to do that but I will be casting on and there's no way that I'd be able to knit brioche and talk on a zoom as well so maybe like one Sunday in a couple of weeks time when my life calms down a little bit um we can just have it like a craft afternoon zoom for an hour or so okie dokie um, what do we do next? We do reading, watching, listening, and blah, blah. So I don't have any notes. And I had a thought about something I wanted to talk about with my, I know. Okay. Reading. The book is over there. If I remember, I'll insert a photo, but I'm not getting up because I'm mostly uncomfortable and we're going to get out of this pretty soon because we're at 29 minutes and I have an assignment to write. All right. So. I read a book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. Whew, it's a good book. So I started this book in January and um, I bought it on Audible. 
and the book was great and I'm listening to it and I'm like I need to I need to buy this damn it I was gonna print something at uni and I forgot okay sidetrack brain um so anyway had the book on audible I'm listening to it really liking it I felt like it's the book kind of like my untamed by Glennon Doyle that I just sticky note draw in you know just really engage with the text and I didn't have it because I was listening to it on Audible. So anyway, I probably two months ago found it at Cole, no, Big W or Kmart or something for like 20 bucks, maybe 25. And I knew I wanted to finish it. So bought the book. I can't say it's changed my life because it's been five days, <laughs> but it's really good. Um, I will link to a TED talk that, or like a, a chat that he gives it's like eight minutes long down in the description um and this guy it's just it's about change like habits and habits become like you make a goal your goal becomes like you make a habit and then habit becomes habit or the changes you want to make become habit and then they're just you know think about it and he talks about this thing which I the thing I got the most out of probably was this thing called well two things two minute rule and habit stacking so I don't floss my teeth enough I floss every second day or something or on a good week, every second day, let's say. So my habit stack is I brush my teeth at least twice a day, every day. So morning or night, whatever I choose, probably even evening, I would floss my teeth and then brush my teeth. And so it doesn't take any extra time and you, you habit stack. So um, if you're a bodybuilder and like when I work out at the gym, I'm, I do weightlifting. Um, and so if you say for instance have protein and you want to take creatine instead of taking your creatine later or whatever you have it stack and i'm useless at remembering to take my creatine so for the last five days i have my protein shake after i train and in my protein shake i put the creatine and then i get to have both at once and it's like tick the box the two minute rule so say you have a new habit that you want to form so for me i had a bit of a meltdown last week because my intensives were still intense uni was about to start i was extremely overwhelmed my family call it eoring. Like I was really pessimistic and I would say in a deficit mindset and my sister would say pessimistic, but that's her psychologist kind of hat on. And anyway, I, that's kind of what prompted me to finish reading the book. And so I sat down and reevaluated and I'm like, okay, what do I need to change? I need to get up and walk more on the days I work. I'm extremely sedentary. I can easily do less than a thousand steps a day because I work in my room if I don't go to the gym that day, I don't necessarily leave the house. Like I walk to the ladder box and back and then around to the kitchen, I hang some washing out and then that's it. Like, unless I made a conscious effort. So put some plans in place, planned out my week, put it in my diary. But the two minute rule essentially is like, say you don't, he uses this example, you don't work out. You don't, your goal is go to the gym three or five days a week. You don't start at the end point. You start with it, something that will take you two minutes to do. So the first day will be like, okay, I need to get up at 5.30. So you set your alarm, you get up and you get out of bed. And then the next day you build on that habit. You get up, you get dressed, you put your gym clothes on. And then the next day you drive to the gym. You don't even need to get out of your car, but you started to make the habit by you got to the gym. Well, the next day you get to the gym and you have to stay for five minutes. And maybe the next time you go, you stay for 10 minutes. Or even to begin with, you just walk there and you or you get to there and then by the end of it, it, it becomes a habit. The habit becomes you and it's a lot, becomes a lifestyle sort of thing. So for me, I've changed get to getting, I'm a morning person, but it's been winter and it's not as cold as it used to be where I used to live, but I haven't wanted to get out of bed and I've been in a pretty damn depressive mood. So I haven't got out of bed and it gets to seven o'clock and I have to log in for work at 7.30 and I'm like, oh, I didn't go for a walk. I didn't go to the gym. I have enough time to have a quick shower, have breakfast and log onto my computer or do a bit of reading or a bit of knitting. And I realized I hadn't been crafting either because I hadn't prioritized it. And I know that I need, that's my outlet and I need to do it. So Monday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday nights, I like to watch Survivor. So that'll be my watching. Um, and so I've been crocheting while I watch that, which I wasn't doing. And the TV show we watched before that MasterChef, I was just eyes on the TV and I wasn't crafting. And I'm like, all right, well, the reason I started crafting was for productive procrastination. So, so yeah, so that's what I've been reading.
I've just, well, I finished that a few days ago and I've just listened to an audiobook called Sex, Lies and Question Time by a former Labour MP, Kate Ellis. And I listened to that on audiobook from the library while I've been driving to uni this week. And that was just a six hours or so. So that was really, that was good. It, intro, very interesting read. Um, okay, watching, I've been watching Australian Survivor and obviously the Olympics um, because that's been on. But I think most people have been watching the Olympics which is great. Australia is doing really well in the pool and a few other areas. But um, yeah, so that's what I've mostly been watching when I'm watching it. But uni's back, so I basically have not watched much other than three episodes of Survivor and a bit of swimming. And then listening, um, listening to that other book, Sex, Lies and Question Time. Um, and some podcasts, which I've also kind of started to streamline my podcast I switched from Apple podcast to overcast and that's been a really good change um and then when I did that I got rid of some that I needed to stop watching because listening to because I just had too many piling up in my feed and yeah um and if you like the minimalists they have a podcast and James Clear was like episode 165 so I listened to that as well and I got in my James Clear kick yeah okay that is reading watching listening blah blah but hopefully less than four minutes so we can have this done in less than 40. I also just readjust myself again. Okay. You may have noticed, or you may not have, and I'm just about to highlight it, but I don't have any makeup on. And that's because my skin is killing me. Um, it's not really. I have perioral dermatitis. I'm not allowed to wear any makeup. I to wash my face with special stuff. I put this cream on three times a day. And, um... I, it's stress related because I'm out of my mind stress with uni um, and whatnot. So that's been fun. So I like to be like nicely made up and presented for you guys usually, but not for the next month at least until this little baby clears up and my face is broken out like crazy, but hey, hormones, like life is fun. Um, What else? Uni went back this week. I have got a couple of different courses. I've had now a like a tutorial for every course. I really enjoyed my senior history uh, tutorial today. Um, we got into some philosophical and ethical debates, which is always fun in a history class. Um, I did not enjoy my English so much last semester for junior English, maybe because I was just overwhelmed with everything else. But senior English, I think, is going to be fun. We have to choose a text, and one of the assignments is, our first assignment is to write a, excuse me, 70-minute lesson plan, which is pretty standard, and then we have to present, like, 10 to 12 minutes of that lesson plan, and it's the introductory lesson for the unit. And so I get to choose the text off a prescribed list, and I'm tossing out between The Crucible, which is a play in four acts by Arthur Miller, and there is the Daniel Day-Lewis and Winona Ryder film, it's the play, like it's the book in the play and I've got it on reserve at the library. So hopefully that will turn up soon. Or maybe Hidden Figures, which is a multimodal text. So it's a film. Um, and I have read the book and I feel like that would be really interesting to explore. So I've printed off some like journals um, and some resources. So I'm going to sit down and figure that out. So that'll be fun. Um, and then my other two are just um, like pedagogical courses. So one's on assessing, you know, what's it called? Diversity and inclusion. No, I already did that one. Individual learning needs and um, my practicum course, which is like managing the learning environment. So that is also a fun one. Um, I have to write a lesson plan. I think it's 15 minutes and it can be whatever topic I want, whatever year level I want in my teaching areas. Um, and then my tutor is going to plant some moles in the class who like one kid will be falling asleep. The other person like won't do what you say, won't get off their phone. So the assessment isn't about our lesson plan and our teaching. It's actually about how we manage the learners in the environment and are we inclusive and, and whatnot. So that'll be fun, I think. Um, What else? I've painted my nails pink. I freaking love this color. It'll be my newest thing, Um, uh, my newest love. Um, and then I haven't really been watching too many other podcasts, but I did watch my friend Crystal from Books, Hooks and Yarn. 
recently Ali from Fiberbound has a new one out. I haven't watched that yet. It's in my to be watch list. Same with Naomi from the Yarn Curator. Yarn Curator podcast. She is a historian and um what do you do Naomi? You curate curate museum exhibit in Florida in America. Um and then who else? Did I say Ali from Fiberbound has a new episode as well? Yeah, so there are my watch list and then to be honest, anytime I watch YouTube was um James Clear stuff or uni uni stuff this week. So yeah, I think it'll be a couple of weeks before I duck back in. It's been two weeks since I recorded, but only a week since I uploaded this. But because we're doing the make along, I will put that in here. Just a reminder that we have a discount code for you lovely viewers from Bella from Crafts by Bella store. Um, that'll be listed in the description down below. Um, oh, look at my guns. <laughs> I can't, that's probably going. I can't believe I did that. Um, Mad About You 10 is the discount code. So make sure you go and have a look at Bella's store and give her some love. <sighs> Yeah, enjoy the Olympics and let me know if you're joining us for the craft along. We cannot wait to have you and once I sort out the prizes, I will maybe do a separate video or at least like we'll mention them again. Um, on a kind of different note, if you are a maker of some description and you would like to donate some prizes to the podcast, I will put my email address in the description box below and then um, you can feel free to send me an email or DM me, DM me on Instagram and we can sort something out. But um, in my mind at the moment, we've got the giveaway for the knit along, which will be at least one, maybe two prizes at the end of the year. It'll just depend on how many people participate um, and then and whatnot. And then I would, the next one will probably be a 500 subscriber giveaway, which hopefully we might get to by the end of the year. But also I do this for fun and so I can have some sense of community and I've met some wonderful people through it. So yeah, it's time consuming, but I think worth it. So here to continue. And once I get a blog or a website up and running, I bought my domain name. We are good to go. Just haven't chosen a platform yet. So once that's done, I'll be sure to update you. Thank you so much for letting me dribble on for 42 minutes and 30 seconds. And it, hopefully it will be less than that when I chop some bits out. Um, yeah. See you when I see you. Thanks for watching. I don't know how I end this anymore. <laughs> Bye.